guys, it's Kayla, and welcome back to Angel or Devil. Last time, we were getting pretty close to Ruval, so let's see how it all turns out in Chapter 4. Ruval Main Story Chapter 4 The next day, hmm? When I woke up, I looked around but didn't see Ruval anywhere. I searched around the house, but I still couldn't find him. Where did he get off to? I sat down and went over yesterday's events. I'm warmer now. I recalled being embraced by Ruval and his soft voice tickling my ear. Huh? You're pretty and warm. His unthinkable murmur sent my pulse skyrocketing. Ruval? I stayed still, feeling his breath. In time, it slowed into the distinctive rhythm of someone sleeping. Hmm? He's sleeping? I was somewhat relieved, but at the same time, I felt like I was being sucked into his warmth. What should I do? If I stay like this, it was the last thing I would think about before falling asleep myself. Then, I must have fallen asleep. Just after I spoke to myself, what, are you disappointed? I looked up to see a grinning diavol floating in mid-air. He swooped down and held my chin. Mind in the gutter, hmm? My face began to burn. What are you talking about? My mind's not in the gutter anyways. He only grinned. Huh, well that's fine. I prefer if you think about me instead. As he spoke, he thrust his lips unnervingly close to me. Whoa, um, wait a moment. I tried to wriggle away from him, but he had me trapped between himself and a wall. That's a nice face. With a flick of his tongue, he moistened his lips. Um, but just then. Vile as always, it's impressive for what it's worth. Diavol's eyes darted in the direction of a clear voice. Beyond his eyes stood. She has a pure soul, one destined to become an angel. Lattice was there with us, smiling warmly. You should be ready to greet the consequences of pulling anything while I'm watching. He reached for a cross at his hip, almost like a gunslinger. Damn it, I didn't know you were watching. Diavol stepped away from me to face Lattice. Let me tell you something. Whoever said that a pure soul has to become an angel? Lattice continued to smile. Nobody, really. There are some things so obvious that they don't need to be said. Once again, the situation between these two seemed explosive. Why do they have to? I watched their showdown, wishing I could run away. But then Diavol broke the painful silence. Well, whatever. I've got tons of chances left. When he had finished his statement, he faced me with an alluring smile. See you later. He left and Lattice came over to me, appearing worried. Are you okay? Yes. That's good to hear. He looked so relieved that he took my sense of nervousness away. And then, there was a rattling at the door. Hmm? It appeared that Ruvel had come back. But upon seeing Lattice, he froze. In a panic, I rushed over to Ruvel. Um, this is... I can find a decent excuse, but Lattice cut me off. Ruvel? Huh? I thought my heart would stop. I'll make breakfast. Without a word more, he looked away and headed for the kitchen. Hmm? I turned around and accidentally locked eyes with Lattice. Ah, uh, let's chase after Ruvel. I can't let this slide. Excuse me. I excused myself from Lattice's presence and chased after Ruvel. Ruvel, wait! I hurried into the kitchen, but Ruvel was preparing breakfast as if nothing was wrong. I stood stock still. How could you go cook at a time like this? Huh? My heart skipped a beat. It was like he was reading my mind. That's the kind of face that you're making. Um, we'll talk about this later. He stopped preparing breakfast and walked over near me. I turned around, but Lattice wasn't there any longer. It looked like Ruvel had noticed him leave. Looks like he's gone. He muttered and sat down near me. You didn't ask him how he knew me. Yeah, I just thought it'd be best to talk to you first. He paused and sniffed a laugh. <laughs> uh, curious. He muttered to me while I was still standing. How about you sit? Uh, okay. Afterwards, an uncomfortable silence loomed over us. I searched for the right words to start talking with, but then... Where should I start? My thinking grounded to a halt. What? If there's something you want me to talk about, I will. Um, do you know Lattice? Yeah. How? How? That's a difficult question. At that time, my eyes were drawn to a paper bag on the floor. Oh, I picked it up and offered it to Ruvel. Here, Ruvel. Hmm? It's a sketchbook and pen. I got it for you. His eyes opened a little wider. For me? Yeah. Shouldn't I have? A gentle smile formed on his face. Wow, I've never seen him make a face like this. For a moment, it felt that I could forget everything that happened earlier. But now... Well, now that you've got it, why not draw something? He hesitated for a moment before looking at the paper bag in his hand. Is that all you're going to ask me? His persistence caught me off guard, but I was thinking that maybe we could draw a little, then continue talking. For some reason, I decided to put off the talk. He paused, but it seemed he understood, as he pulled out a sketchbook and pen from the paper bag. That's fine, but... Then he began to sketch. 
I had been expecting a show, but it really was so impressive that I couldn't take my eyes off of his pin. You really are good at this. I spoke without thinking, and without any change in expression, Ravel opened his mouth. No, your drawings are better. Huh? No way! You're far better than I am! Ravel sniffed, sounding skeptical. <laughs> your drawings. They have warmth. I can't draw that way. At his soft voice, I suddenly stood up as if having realized something. Let's go to the park from yesterday. Huh? It's raining. I looked out the window to check, and just as he said it was sprinkling. Oh no, the kitten! I grabbed an umbrella, and Ravel and I hurried off to the park. Hmm? We arrived at the park, but the cardboard box wasn't there. Did somebody take the cat? The thought was pleasant. Not here. Nope. I hope a good person took the kitten in. Feeling better, I moved to return home, but Ravel stood alone, still facing the other direction. What's the matter? Hearing me, his body jerked slightly. Nothing, really. I looked up at his face, but his eyes startled me. They were vacant and cold. Immediately, I walked off in the direction he was looking, and there I found the cold, collapsed body of the kitten. What? Huh? What should we do? The vet hospital! I turned around, but someone else had arrived. It looks like he just put his cape back on, but... It's too late. There was a reaper. Who are you? Where did you take Rubel? Before my eyes, he reverted to human form. Rubel? An unthinkable situation. No, a reality I didn't want to consider rooted me to my spot. Oh no! Rubel, you're a reaper? In response, Rubel returned to the form of a reaper and smiled. He realized it. Well, I began to stammer and he lifted his scythe, ready to swing it at the kitten. Huh? Wait! I reached out a hand in protest and Rubel eyed me coldly. What? Are you going to take the kitten's soul? Yes, it's a good soul. Now's the best time. But we could still save it. No, not anymore. But it's still breathing. With great difficulty. Do you think it would be best to release it now? However we might try, we can no longer save its life. That can't be. Let's ask him to wait. A reaper probably knows the most about death, but would you wait a little longer? I hastily asked him to stay his hand, and his eyebrows jerked. Why? Just give it a little more time. I want to be with it, so please. I begged him with a weakening voice looking downwards. The human ego. His utterance pierced my heart. I don't particularly care. He relaxed his sigh and looked down at the kitten. We waited for what seemed like ages. Eventually, the kitten's breath faded away into nothing. I had contacted the nearby vet hospital, but apparently they weren't open and there was nothing that I could do. I could only pet it in the desperate attempt to offer a pleasant passing. I could feel its body become colder by the minute. Something wet and warm spilled from the corners of my eyes. Isn't that enough? Ruvel didn't wait for an answer and swung his scythe down in the direction of the kitten. The kitten's soul had been taken, and its captor was Ruvel, a reaper. Shock was layered on shock, and I was struck speechless. Ruvel had reverted to his human form, but he did nothing more than crouch near me. But somebody else had arrived. Come on, Ruvel, that's no good. You can't make a cute girl cry like that. An obnoxiously carefree voice approached from behind. I looked back to see a man with the most courteous smile I had ever seen. Um, I paused in my confusion and he squeezed my hand. There we go, handshake. I'm a reaper, same as him. Name's Reiner, nice to meet ya. I was hardly in the mood to deal with his over-friendly greeting. Yeah. What's all this? You're down in the dumps. Ah, it must be about the kitten who just passed on, huh? That must have been a real downer. What a pity, am I right? There, there. He patted me rhythmically on the head. But don't worry, we'll bring its soul to a great hereafter. No problem whatsoever. How can this person be so cheerful? Ravel cut into the conversation. What are you here for? Oh, please, I told you. Mr. Hades is being annoying again, so I, well, ran away, I guess. Mr. Hades? So, you know, it'd be nice if you could bring this little lady's soul back already. He looked over at me as he spoke. Without her, it's going to be hard for me to go back to them, you know? I could feel something foul welling up in me. That's terrible! My mouth tasted bitter. Is my life that cheap of a thing? I left them with that question before running off. Whoopsie, did I say something wrong? As I left, I saw Ravel's eyes still uncomfortably cold. I couldn't shake that terrible impression from my mind. Back at home, I threw myself onto my bed. Ravel really was a reaper. Does that mean he hung around my house just so he could get my soul? Various feelings roiled about inside me. It's horrible. Someone replied to my whisper. What is? I lifted my face, and there was Ravel in his human form. Ma! Why are you here? To take my soul? He sighed quietly. <sighs> if that's what I was here for, I would have taken it long ago. Oh, I thought back on the days I had spent with Ravel here. 
But why then? He stared at me carefully. I promise you I teach you to draw. His quiet voice calmed me down a little bit. Is that okay? Didn't you need my soul now? Won't that Reiner person get mad at you? He opened his mouth to interrupt me. I told you at the beginning, if you want to paint, you should. The memory of it came back to me, the conversation we had at the museum. Oh, but you're still here because you want my soul, aren't you? That is true, but you want to paint, do you not? I do. Still unsure of his real motive, I fell to silence. The kitten. He began to mutter out of nowhere. Would have suffered like that had it lived any longer. I see. Then he just wanted to end its suffering? Just as I had come to the realization. I want to draw now. At his urging, I reluctantly began to sketch with him. I hardly feel like this is the time to be sketching, but somehow it managed to calm my heart down. Before I knew it, I was sketching in earnest, and eventually... You never noticed that I was the same reaper. I smiled faintly back at him. Well, not quite. There were times when I suspected it. Ah. Uh, silence fell on us again, until my stomach growled. Hmm? Why now? Burning in embarrassment, I turned my face away. Guess I'll go make something. Oh no, not you, Ruvel. You can't make something. He headed for the kitchen. His previously awful suit sprung to my mind. Hold on just a bit. I quickly chased after him. Um, I can take care of the cooking. Would you like to help me, Ruvel? He nodded. I understand. Curious as it was, we stood side by side putting together a meal. I sliced vegetables and Ruvel boiled and fried them. Naturally, I was the one to season them. It seemed we had settled into the perfect roll sharing, but... Should I even be here? Huh? In my surprise, I stopped chopping and looked over at Ruvel. The next moment... Ow! Oh! In my distraction, I'd accidentally cut one of my fingertips. Oh shoot, this looks really bad. Ruvel looked closer at my hand, and then... Huh? He looked at my injured finger and closed his mouth on it. What? Well, um, Ruvel, wait! Hmm. He stood back up and looked down at my finger. Hmm, there. What's there? I... I looked down and the bleeding had indeed stopped. Something like this happened before. He looked me in the face earnestly. My heart leapt to see his face up close in spite of myself. Huh, what's you? The plate fragment. But I remembered the time I had cut my finger before. All right. He continued to stare at me and my pulse began to rise. I could feel his breath brushing past me and I was unable to move. And then he abruptly stepped away from me. I'll leave the rest to you. He nodded appreciatively before turning around and leaving the kitchen. That was kind of a shock. My heart continued to race a while afterwards, and for a reaper, what on earth am I doing? But despite my alarm, before I knew it, I was humming a tune and finishing up the meal. You've got mail. It's from Reiner. Hello. I'm Ravel's boss, Reiner. Remember me? It was a pity we didn't get to talk much today. I hope we can get to know each other better the next time we meet. And the next time we meet, I hope you become more familiar with the beauty of that soul of yours. Until then, take good care of my boy Ravel, okay? Just kidding. See ya! These chapters go by so fast, but I guess we can read more of the continuation next time in chapter 5. Thanks for watching. Bye guys!